Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game, uh, written in 1984. I'm not for sure if he started out good and then became evil or what it hell, uh, what the hell happened with Orson Scott Card. I remember actually Orson. I just thought Orson was a great name. I considered um, I liked Orson Scott Card, and then I also liked uh, um, Orson Welles, uh, the man who made the War of the Worlds and then the radio broadcast and um, made that movie about uh, William Randolph Hearst, Citizen Kane. But here's a quote that uh, Orson Scott Card had said. He said, How long before married people answer the dictators thus? Regardless of law, marriage has only one definition, right? One man, one woman. This is what Kentucky said in 2004. 75% of Kentuckians said this, but the federal government had said something. Um, recently, a judge had said, You can't do that. It says you have to respect other laws of other states. So, therefore, you can't, you know, the attorney general actually says he couldn't overturn it because he felt like he would be rationalizing discrimination. He breaks down and he cries. But our governor, who's been so great with common core standards and education and with uh, uh, Obamacare is showing everybody that he's a fucking bigot. He's a fucking anti-homosexual fucking bigot, which isn't a surprise since Steve Brashear came out from Dawson Springs, uh, which is the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan. So uh, this, you know, it, it, he's a racist. So big surprise that a racist is actually against gay people too. Since gay people is the uh, modern day civil rights movement. Uh, you cannot scapegoat anybody in society. People are free to, to do as they choose, especially consenting adults. You have no right to legislate um, what two consenting adults want to do in the privacy of their own bedrooms. So, he says, uh, uh, regardless of law, marriage has only one definition and any government that attempts to change it is my mortal enemy. I'll act to destroy that government and bring it down so it can be replaced with a government that will respect and support marriage help me raise my children in a society where they will expect to marry in their turn. So, He's basically saying he's going to overthrow the government which legalizes gay marriage. He hates gay marriage so much he will overthrow the government which allows it to happen. So I guess if we were to take his words seriously, he should be considered a terrorist or on the terrorist watch list since this is what he says. And um, Obama has evolved on gay marriage and um, therefore you know things are changing, right? We're starting to see some change here in America. So having been appointed from the start of his career because he was that magical combination of black men who talks like a white man, and that's what they mean when they call him articulate and a great speaker. He's never had to do work for a living. He's never had to struggle to accomplish his goals. He despises ordinary people. He's hostile to any religion that doesn't have Obama as its deity, and his contempt for the military is complete. <laughs> God Damn. Okay, I don't even want to unpack any of that. It's just, he's an insane fucking madman. He's saying that he's never had to struggle or fight to accomplish his goals. He's the fucking president. Do you remember the campaign? You remember all those speeches he had to make? Um, community organizing is hard to do. And uh, he went to school, law school, a law professor. That's a, a job he had, right? So he was a community organizer. There's a job, and it's a struggle to get up and organize people and to be a law professor, to know the law and to teach others, to go in a classroom, to teach others, give tests. Uh, that's also a job um, if you don't I mean I don't know what he's trying to say how that's not work he just writes words on a piece of paper right so is that a job writing books if speeches aren't um, um, a job but teaching's a job and uh, community organizing's a job and being a senator's a job and running the whole fucking country is a job <laughs> he says that he doesn't understand struggle Get the fuck out of here, Orson Scott Card. You're fucking ridiculous. He says he despises ordinary people. He is an ordinary person. That's another thing I like about... Um, I hate Obama's policy when it comes to foreign policy. I hate it. I absolutely despise that. I despise a lot of things. I feel like the Republicans put so much pressure on him. He actually, his will is bent towards their ways. He's more conservative and he's um, pandering to a lot of the Republicans. He actually still kind of cares what they have to say when he shouldn't. He shouldn't give a shit about what they have to say because they have not been his friend. Um, so he should break up with them, you know, they don't love him. Um, but they're sitting there saying that um, he despises ordinary people. That's one thing I like about Obama is that they start out as working class people, right? Him and Michelle, very much like Jimmy Carter in a way. He's a peanut farmer. Uh, Michelle and Barack Obama were, you know, they're just they're regular folks. And it's, it's really cool to actually see uh, sort of the American dream happen because rags to riches doesn't happen a lot. And, you know, his, his story is awesome. I mean, his father's a Kenyan, Kenyan man. His mother's, you know, from Kansas, and they meet in Hawaii, and they have Barack Obama. So, you know, that's, that's amazing. So, I mean, I don't know how rich these folks are. Um, they could have just got loans and, and worked over there. I haven't heard about them actually being, like, wealthy 
people. So, the Bull City despises ordinary people. Well, he just pulls that out of his ass. He says he's hostile to any religion. He's actually really nice to other religion. You've seen him wearing that Muslim garb, right? They want to sit there and say he's a Muslim himself because he had wore Muslim garb in respect of other people's religion. He even, I think he's an atheist, but he talks about God all the time. So, he's respectful of Christianity. And, um, and they said that Obama is the only God that uh, he respects, which... That's okay, insane, and um, his contempt for the military. He's the commander in chief. He can't, why? How's he going to hate the military like he hates the military? If anything, it's very much okay to hate the empire, to dislike how America de defeated the Nazis just to become imperialist, racist ourselves. We don't need to be controlling the world. We don't need to be policing the world. The American empire doesn't help me. Doesn't help the working class people, and it shouldn't be there. Do I? I don't hate the military. I don't hate the troops that go in there because they believe the things that they're doing is is for a good thing, uh, is for a good cause. But by having a standing military, by having people just standing around with guns, practicing with guns, eventually you're going to you know have to justify why you're spending all that money. So you have to get them to do things, and that's why everybody, John McCain wants you know war to happen against Russia. He wants war to happen with uh, Georgia when Russia invaded Georgia, when Russia invaded Crimea. He's just war all the time. War, 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 war with Syria, war with Yemen, your war with everybody. And so Obama actually has been uh, more imperialist than George W. Bush. He's taken the war powers that George W. Bush had consolidated. We had a shit ton of power, and now Obama's got an even greater shit ton of power, um, um, and he's consolidating the Bush doctrine of preemptive strike. If you think someone's going to shoot you they, or attack you, then you're allowed to invade first, which is... The person who throws the first punch is the one who's guilty. If I invaded your country because I thought you was going to invade mine, I invaded you. That's what Hitler, you know, we learned that from Hitler. We learned that was Hitler's main crime. He invaded a different country. He took over a sovereign nation. That's what he did. So, I said I didn't want to unpack it, but I did. Okay, so, the um, Orson Scott card... I see Orson Scott Card as more like an Edgar Allan Poe. I want to say he's like a psycho, but there's logic behind what he's saying, but it's sort of like this right-wing logic. He's probably just watching too much Sean Hannity or um, uh, uh, who's that other blue-eyed uh, McCarthy. Um, I don't know. He used to work on Fox News, but he was fired. Oh, the Glenn Beck. So, um, I don't know what the fuck is up with Orange Scott Card, but I feel like I see him as a Edgar Allan Poe or maybe like a Vincent Van Gogh. Like, I wouldn't cut off my ear and give it to a woman as a president, just like Vincent Van Gogh do, did, but I still enjoy Vincent Van Gogh's paintings, as well as Edgar Allan Poe's poetry, um, even though he's weird. So, Edgar Allan Poe is weird, and uh, Vincent Van Gogh is doing weird shit in order to try to appeal to a woman. But I enjoy his paintings, and I can enjoy uh, Edgar Allan Poe's poetry. Um, you know, weary, weary, midnight dreary, um, quoth the raven, nevermore. I like Stephen King, and he, he comes up with the most fucked up shit you know, that I've ever read or heard about. And also, people change. So I'm not sure if Orson Scott Card, who he was in 1984, is the same man that he is now. Uh, we see this with Fred Phelps, the founder of the Westboro Baptist Church. He raised free speech to its highest echelons, and maybe he actually did more about stopping the empire than anybody else, but he did it in the name of hating homosexuals, which is very much like Orson Scott Card now. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, Fred Phelps protested military funerals, said that God had hated fags, right? He had signs, God hates fags. And so, um, he says that's why we're at war and people are dying because we've legalized homosexuality. So very much... Fred Phelps and Orson Scott Carr seem to be on the same page right now. But before Fred Phelps became a psychotic, homophobic piece of shit, um, he fought many civil rights cases in the South during the 1960s against employers who discriminated against um, black employees. So he was actually very, uh, a very good man during the 1960s. If you would have met Fred Phelps in the 1960s, you would have not expected him to become the person that he was that we know of today. Mel Gibson... He, I like his Braveheart movie. His Braveheart movie is incredible. William Wallace fighting against tyranny. And instead of uh, ratting out his people, he goes ahead and takes death. And he's like, freedom! Right? Top-notch movie. I remember actually watching it in the theater. I snuck in actually at the very end and watched like the last ten minutes. But I remember giving everybody giving a standing ovation to it. And Mel Gibson isn't even in there. So, who you know, who basically we were proud of ourselves for watching it. 
good movie. You, I, like, I guess maybe that's what it is. We all just wanted to acknowledge we all liked it. But Mel Gibson, he's an anti-Semitic, sexist psychopath, right? Talked to that cop, called her sugar tits and stuff. Um, yelling at his ex-girlfriend like a fucking psycho. Said he's gonna, uh, do you want to be gang raped by a pack of niggers? That's what he says. So he's fucking racist, he's sexist, he's anti-Semitic. Saying about how the Jews run the world. Um, but Braveheart is absolutely incredible, right? So, you know, um, that, what, what do you do with this? What do you do with, like, sort of the uh, mixture here? Um... I can watch Braveheart and sort of, you know, be proud of William Wallace, uh, but that's, I don't have the same feelings against, you know, uh, of Mel Gibson when it comes to black folks or Jewish people or women. Uh, so, there's racism also in an earlier edition of Ender's Game, even though it's said to have been changed, which I'm going to check that out. I'll check it out for next time. I also need to make a correction, too, about C.J. Miller. I messed up his actual story. But, so... Uh, an old copy of the book in early printing includes a part where there's some routine trash talking between the kids. Ender calls his friend ally by the n-word, right? He calls him nigger, I guess, right? And then he jokes about how his great-great-grandfather would have sold Adlai's grandfather to another slave owner for not liking that term. Oh, kids these days. So here's actually the piece. It says, And Shin, oh, that little slanty-eyed bug wiggler. Slanty-eyed, so that's a little anti-Asianist, right? Ender decided that Ally was joking. Hey, we all can't be niggers. Ally grinned. My grandpa would have killed you for that. And then Ender responds, Well, my great-great-grandpa would have sold him first. So, oh, yeah, Ender fucking won that argument. Yeehaw, yeah, right. Great for fucking white people owning slaves. And that is a historical insult for black people. So that was very insensitive. And it might actually indicate that he's the same fucking person that he is the whole time. I like to think that he changed, but maybe he's just been a homophobic piece of shit. I don't know. Uh, 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 Mel Gibson was a homophobic piece of shit, too, right? So, um... I'm not sure if he's homophobic. I would assume he is because he's a right-wing Christian, but he's anti-Semitic and all the other things, racist and uh, anti-women. So, the um, yeah, he is racist. He said packing niggers. But the um, racist or the uh, Mel Gibson, his Braveheart movie is incredible. So, you know, can you recognize art to be good from a person? It's hard to do. Actually, I don't. In general, I would think that I would want to respect the person that the art came with, and so I do feel guilty for liking this book. But I like it, and I'll tell you why I like it, and I'll like it for my own reasons. So, Orson Scott Card, you ain't going to like me, man. You ain't going to like me at all. I took your book, and I took it to mean something completely different, you know. Um, so, I liked Ender's Game a whole ton. A uh, person can write this story, art piece, create something, and then once it's published and thrown out to the public, then it's kind of however we interpret it, right? That's sort of how communication works. You know, just because you just you're a piece of shit racist, if you draw, draw a great painting of, you know, the Mona Lisa, or I don't even want to insinuate, but if you just make a great painting, can you say that that painting is good even though the person's a piece of shit? I don't know. I, I probably, right? Um... So, let's see. Uh, anyways, so I think it's mine to do with as I please with it, right? It's my and I, I did take it a whole different route than Orson Scott Card. In fact, I think you can use Ender's Game sort of to be against homosexuality. You can be the chosen one that's going to be against um, homosexuality. You can be the chosen one against racism and the chosen one against all the other, you know, what you perceive to be immoral about the world. So, some good lessons in Ender's Game. In the very beginning, Ender is being confronted with a bully. And he's actually confronted with three bullies, but they're not going to let him pass, even though he insisted on it. So eventually he sees that he's outnumbered. And, well, he, let me just read the passage, okay? I got one minute. I don't know if I'll be able to get through the one minute of it. Um, yeah, I'll start it. Okay, so it was Stilson, of course. He wasn't bigger than most other kids, but he was bigger than Ender. And he had some others with him. He always did. Hey, third, don't answer. Nothing to say. Hey, third, we're talking to you. Third, hey, bugger lover, we're talking to you. Can't think of anything to answer. Anything I will say will make it worse. So we'll say nothing. That's his internal dialogue talking. Hey, third. Hey, turd, you flunked out, huh? Thought you were better than us, but you lost your little birdie, thirdy. Got a band-aid on your neck. Are you going to let me through, Ender asked? Are we going to let him through? Should we let him through? They all laughed. Sure, we'll let you through. First, we'll let you arm through, then your butt through, then maybe a piece of your knee. The others chimed in now. Lost your birdie, 30. Lost your birdie, 30. So there's his fucking bullies just blocking his path. Stiltson began pushing him with one hand. 
Someone behind him then pushed him towards Stilson. So, seesaw Marjorie Daw. Seesaw Marjorie Daw. I don't know what that means. Somebody said. Tennis. Ping pong. This would not have a happy ending, so Ender decided that he'd rather not be the unhappiest at the end. The next time Stilson's arm came out to push him, Ender grabbed it, and he missed. Oh, going to fight me, huh? Going to fight me, 30? The people behind Ender grabbed at him to hold him. Ender did not feel like laughing, but he laughed.